Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 in my Carthaginian campaign let's play for Imperator Rome's 1.3 Livy update. Now in the last episode we just got done invading Sicily, taking out Acragas, their ally Gellus, which burns right now, and their other ally Syracuse, which is being destroyed so heavily that their capital city is no longer called Syracuse, it's now called Birot. I didn't have a choice in the matter. Now the province is still called Syracuse, which kind of bothers me, but psh, it's just a token name at this point. Syracuse have basically been wiped from history. Now the only thing that stands in the t Carthage's way of total conquests of Sicily will be Seculia, Calacti, and Tindaria. These three are in a defensive alliance together, a defensive league, so we should be able to take them out in one war, no problem. We're currently claiming on Calacte with a 44% done right now, so about a year to go before we get ready to do that. I was actually looking in between episodes, it probably would have been a good idea to try and actually ally them, and then we could have integrated them as clients and just done it passively and peacefully. But unfortunately, I didn't think that far ahead. Uh, anyway, it's not too bad because these guys are actually a settled tribe, Seculia. So they wouldn't have been able to be integrated. They would have been a tribal vassal for a while. Now, they probably would have civilized being Greek. They typically do. Um, but it would have taken much longer. So we've already committed to the claim, which is going to lower opinion ratings and stuff like that. So we're just going to follow through, essentially. Now, I was looking at the mission chains in between episodes as well. And it seems like uh, these don't cancel each other out. I thought they did. So we can actually just go ahead and try and get one of these now. So local governor, uh, it says a local governor will surely ease the tensions between the inhabitants of Eastern Sicily and our new bureaucr bureaucracy in the area. They'll be able to bring order to the area with an air of familiarity. And that's going to give us local citizen happiness 5% and freeman happiness for all territories in Sicily with dominant Siciliot culture. So let's see what that would be. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere. There's even some, what is this? Oh, that's Seculian. So Sicilia and Seculian is different. So these guys are actually Italic. So yeah, so we don't have much of a culture holding here. So I didn't actually look at the province loyalty or anything like that. Let's see. It is going down. So we'll want to get that. And if we get Seculian domination, we'll actually get lo uh, province loyalty increase. So this is pretty good because getting that extra little bit of happiness for all the citizens and freemen there, it's just going to help mitigate that unrest, essentially. Uh, for all those Siciliot towns and help help convert them over time. <clears throat> so in order to get a local governor, we were actually given a character, uh, this guy, uh, Ithocrates Barkid. Now, I've been looking behind the scenes at why the hell his name is Barkid. It was Proctid. Now, I've since loaded the game, so maybe that had an effect. But essentially, this guy was adopted into our main family. There he is there, Ithocrates Barkid. The other weird thing is the family's called Barkid, but everyone else is called Barca. He's just the only Bar Kid. And this guy was also um, adopted in, and he took the name Bar Ka, not Bar Kid. So, pretty weird. I don't understand what's happened there. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but it's just something to point out for, for continuity's sake, I suppose. Anyway, so this guy, he came to us as a Siciliot and a Hellenic guy, so we can take him off the army. Now, he's better, way better suited to being on the army, but just for a while, we'll make him the governor and uh, calm the people down in Sicily, one of their own so to speak. So let's get this governor switched out. There he is, Ithocrates Barkid. So for those who don't know, if you have someone with the same religion and culture as the governor, people of that religion and culture like him better. And eventually we can just force convert this guy as well, so we won't ever change his culture, but we can change his religion at least to calm them down. Uh, so that's that. Now we might want to change this governor policy. We don't necessarily want to bleed them dry. Jesus. Um, but yeah, something like uh, cultural assimilation will be good kind of interesting he's actually assimilating versus his own culture uh, what's the religion like I think that's probably more relevant yeah not great it's Hellenic we want to get Canaanite so let's go with uh, religious conversion there and religious conversion here and religious conversion up here so we'll just try to convert all the religions once you get the religion converted then it's much easier to convert the culture so we'll do that first now that should have opened up local governor yeah there we go boom and that goes straight down to Syracusean warships which is, the Syracusans are known for their ingenuity, and many interesting experiments have come out of the city in the past. Taking a look at their plans, or sorry, through their plans, ideas, and shipyards, they might provide military boons to our forces. Alright, so it takes a year to complete. No problem at all. Now, the other one we can do is Punic Sicania. 
which is have 20 pops in each of these towns, these three different towns. Now to do this, we'll have to move slaves into them. So Kapara is the one that needs four. This needs four particular slaves. They don't have to be of any religion or culture. Just got to pull them out of towns that aren't the ones you're trying to move things into. So there's seven here, for instance. So we'll move four of these. There we go. So that's that town done. So we'll click this one now, move a pop here. And you can see, look at the amount of migration coming in here now because it's a new city. Uh, actually, I don't think this is a new city, but we increased the migration through missions and events before. That's what we did. So loads of people are coming in there now. All right, so we need to move in just one, I think, into here. And then from here, we need to move one in as well. Same situation here, just tons of people going in. One loser's leaving. He doesn't understand a good investment when he sees it. Uh, but he wants to get back to the mainland. Maybe there's just too much war for them. All right, so let's move a pop here. I will also take them from Irx, the next nearby town. Uh, maybe just in case there's not many pops there, we'll do it from somewhere else. Okay, so that should be... There are now with... Uh, how many people are here? 20, 20, and 20. So we did it. There we go. Punic Sicania. Our Epicratia in Western Sicily has long been the only bulwark against Syracusian aggressia, ag aggression. <laughs> aggression. Though often sacked and broken down in the many wars, we need to make sure that our cities are populous enough to guide those who rely on our protection. And three Canaanite Punic Freemen will appear in Lilibe Aziz and Caparis. So that's six free pops, or nine free pops for the three cities, right? Yep, 23, 23, and 23. Awesome. Okay, cool. And then the next one is end of an era. So we can't do that without Seculian domination, so I won't even bother reading it. Seculian domination will happen when we go to war. I guess, actually, then this makes sense that we, we're going to fight rather than client and stuff, because that would have taken way longer. You can't finish the mission until you're done with it, so, yeah. It seems like the right way to do it. Okay, cool. Um, now, based on that war, we have taken a little bit of attrition on this army. We did run out of food. I didn't recruit um, a supply train with it. Oh, no, it was this one I didn't recruit a supply train. These guys ran out of food during their sieges. So we'll have to just... They're, they're gaining food now, but we'll just bring them back to an area of better supply. <clears throat> and hopefully they'll be okay. I'll put a new commander on this. Actually, this army doesn't really need one. Although we'll just... Yeah, we'll just get one. Maharbal Bodona. So he was our previous... Uh, what do you call this? Uh, what is it called? A Safet? Yeah, Safet. Just making sure. He was our previous Safet, and he was actually looking for a job recently. So here you go. Great job. You get to lead an army. 77 loyalty. Are you okay? Now he's fine. He's loving life. Um, and actually, putting him in charge of military stuff is good. You know, he might become even more affiliated with his own... He is the... Is he leading the military party? He is. So he might get the job again in another few years when election's up again. Election time rolls around. All right, so let's lower the maintenance of all this stuff for now. So we're making good money. The other thing I noticed is we can actually start colonizing here. So this is going to be the province of... Uh, what's the province called? How do I check that? I don't know why I can't check that. But anyway, we can just press this and see. Uh, so that is... Yeah, it's just called Corsica. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure. There we go. That's where it is. Corsica. Right, cool. I just didn't think it would be called Corsica, but there it is. Alright, so we have Corsica. We can colonize actually pretty far up. Here, here, or here. Uh, to start off, we'll just go here. It costs 10 gold. And I think we can do two. Can we do three? No, because I added it up before. So what it's doing is colonizing from here. But I think we don't have enough. The dominant culture of Olbia Razna, which is here, is not Punic. But we have um, cultural conversion on. So hopefully that will help over time. So now this is set up here. There's a port here. There should be nice um, actually incoming migration over time here. Because a port settlement and a fresh area. If we made it a city as well, it would definitely help it out. Uh, so that's good. So we're just expanding, extending a little bit. Now there's other territories down in the west that we could also do the same, but there's no... We haven't got um, enough to colonize with yet. So to do that, uh, one of my next areas for a city is definitely going to be like here, I think. Uh, and then that way we can kind of colonize out from it over time. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. That's all I've really looked at. I didn't really look at anything in Iberia yet or anything like that. So yeah, okay. I think we're good to go. Um, am I forgetting anything? Probably a lot, but uh, I think it's all good. We still have a bad research ratio. Our missions are going nicely, actually, considering. And uh, yeah, just to get re-familiar, so we have Himilko Barka leading the country at the moment as the Safet with the co-Safet of Bodastart Bodna, Bodona. 
And this guy's actually got a lot of popularity. 100% popular. People love him. Um, and he's got quite a lot of power base, actually, considering. Probably because he's the leader. Now, we could do this and reduce the build cost for all future buildings, but I don't feel like we've got enough money to warrant doing this yet. I'd want to do that if I ever have, like, a thousand gold. And then we'd be like, yeah, we'll get, like, an extra couple buildings out of it. Uh, doing that. But for now, I think it's fine. Um... But yeah, it looks, looks cool. So the next succession support looks like it's going to be the religious faction. It might both be the religious faction, but we've got four years to go, so we'll see how that all pans out. Uh, all right, let's let time play. And I guess we got to start thinking about, you know, where we're going to go next. Rome are obviously expanding in Italy now pretty, pretty heavily. We've got these two tribes and nations in here that we could kind of think about annexing. We could offer them alliances. Now, they're a federated tribe and a settled tribe, so they're just not going to ever be integrated properly but they're not all, at the same time they're also not really a priority so i don't know i don't really want to offer them a guarantee because that adds to our thing doesn't it i think our active diplomatic relations so we'll just leave them just leave them eventually we can just take them out when we have enough time to do so and if they ever settle then we can just integrate them so they're fine i'll just always try to make sure that i don't piss them off uh so they don't attack me in my back and hopefully they'll be all right with that. Oh, you know what we could do, though? We could begin a couple integrations. Um, so let's see. If we go by neighbors and we go by opinion, we can see Ecola. I want the ones in Africa to kind of come to our side first. So to start an integration, we need relations uh, up, to two, up to 190. So we'll increase relations here with these guys. And then eventually we'll just be able to integrate them. Because these guys, they're not going to do much on the coast of Africa. You know, they'll, they'll add some cursory forces around the place. But with four four cohorts, it's, like, not that important. Hadramentum is another one. I think these guys are actually Greek, if I recall correctly. I don't know how we checked that. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's just see what he is. Punic and Canaanite. Maybe not. But either way, let's just improve his opinion as well. And then we can take him on. All right, cool. So given a little bit of time, those two will hopefully come to our side. And this guy is on hunting fleets, so he's just got hunting down those fleets. Actually, speaking of, we should... I lowered the fleet maintenance. Befitting stature. Wow, we're actually getting some money. Maharbal Bodona is settling into his new role well. Oh, it's the guy we put in. We just put in, in charge of the army. Well, uh, he is of the belief that this is only befitting a man of his stature. He has decided to show his gratitude by offering a small donation to the state. Excellent. Well deserved. So he was our previous leader for the first five years, and now he is leading an army and he's happy about it. Now there's something that can actually, it's going to get hard to remember our rulers, but here we can always check um, the current ruler. We can't ever see the co-rulers, but I'll try to make a note and remember them in my head. It's the hard thing about a republic is remembering your characters. But we've kind of, kind of taken the game slow enough to the point where one episode's probably only ever going to cover about five years. So we'll have a different ruler each episode probably. So there's pirates out there. So I'm going to increase the fleet maintenance back up and let all of our fleets hunt pirates. Because um, that'd be just kind of cool. Boarding tactics. That's what we want on all of these ships. Boarding tactics so we actually grab them. So hunt fleets. Hunt fleets. And there you go. They'll go off and do their thing. So if they find pirates, they'll take them down. I'm just going to tell them to stop hunt fleets. Or uh, boarding tactics and hunt fleets. That's all we need to do. So, 1.3 does a weird thing now where there's prisoners abroad, but they're not mine. I don't think so, anyway. It says, like, hey, you can talk to Heracli and Minoa to get one of your, like, to ransom a prisoner. And the prisoner is Eshikrates Polyperkid. Now, I think that's not one of my characters. I'm pretty sure that's, like, one of the characters of, like, Syracuse or someone that would have died. So we can, like, buy them off them. Yeah, it's a Syracusian. Look at that. So I guess if you see a character, you know, in one of your allies nations that you want to buy for whatever reason um who's the other one seculia have them actually if you see a good enough character it might be worth doing you know maybe yeah but these guys aren't that good this one was from gallus so yeah one Sy syracusian and one uh from gallus but they're just imprisoned they're just gonna die we actually had a, a couple as well didn't we we have eschocrates polyperkid I'm a bit confused. This is me, isn't it? This is Carthage. So, why is it the same guy? Oh, is it just pre it's literally just bugged then, is it?
I don't understand. Okay, so they're in my character list, but they're also in the character list of these two, and we can ransom them from them. I guess I don't have them. I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't matter anyway. Just another broken feature. Probably. Now, where's our fleet gone? Because there's pirates all over the place here. <laughs> I guess they're just on top of each other? I can only see the one. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, how about you head out there and deal with that, yeah? That'd be good. Damn, they're just sailing down the coast. We'll have to catch them with the other fleet. There's a lot of micro in this, I guess. They're just busy work in trying to catch these guys. But it can be worth doing, you know? We can get some free ships doing this, and they're just raiding us, so we should do it. There we go, it looks like they're gonna encounter us. Hey, a, a daughter has been born. Yappa. We don't really need to... It's a cool thing that you can rename, but you don't really need to do that in a republic. It's not really important who's born to who. Alright, a battle has begun, which I I can click, but we can't see from above for some reason. Alright, we're victorious. Uh, they lost five ships. So again, this is it. That's where you capture the ships, right? I was thinking I couldn't find it in the last episode. Alright, so there we go. We got two extra. Alright, we should grab these guys, I think. There we go. Cool, we just got three more ships, one more there. So with our fleet growing this much, you gotta worry about the fleet costs, you know, especially since we're gonna get another 20. Seems like our fleet's gonna get massive based on that. See, I don't know what's going on. Like, how did they just walk past me? Oh, I guess they have in retreat. Okay, that might be why. Alright. Stay out there, stay at the straight. There we go, we fought them again, and we gained three ships. Alright, so let's let all of our fleets come home, and they'll heal up. So we just grew our fleets a little bit there. What are we up to now? 47, 50, 64. Oh, so only two more than we started with, but I guess with numerous battles, that's not too bad. It's actually kind of disappointing, if I'll be honest. I thought we had way more than that. Maybe we lost them with all the attrition that was out here, actually. Um, the battle-hardened soldiers serving under Vermina Hanid have performed mighty, mighty acts of valor. Vermina, in an act of benevolence, has requested permission to institute a particular form of service reward unique to his army. He would take great offense at being denied this honor, but we might wish to be careful of allowing him too much autonomy. Now, he's very loyal, 84. Hanid, what's he in charge of? He's in charge of Galad's first. God, I need to name these armies correctly. I keep changing them around. Uh, we'll let his loyalty... We'll let him do his thing. Let the soldiers have their due. So this is Hanid. Okay. Almost back to full strength. Manpower now growing again, which is good. Uh, we've got a little bit of time to go before our claim is done. And it looks like Etruria is in the shits. Siponta, Mesapia, and a bunch of northern tribes are taking them out. Rome has finished their war, but now they're attacking other people in the south. They're expanding quick. Might be worth getting Region under our belt, seeing as they're only at war with Lockery. Or uh, only allied with Lockery. So that's a fabricated claim on them. Just so we have a foothold in Greece, or in Italy. Now the thing is. We have a navy. We can just land anywhere we want, which is nice. Speaking of, we need to um, make a supply train for this army. I feel like our army build isn't great right now. I mean, this one's okay. It's nice and diverse. There's a lot of different stuff. This should be heavy infantry, and that's cavalry is fine. All right, cool. Did we ever improve the relations with these guys? It seems like we did. Like the senator just like, yeah, declare war on everybody. Why not? Alright, so our ships are healing up. Good stuff. They'll actually take quite a while to heal. 5%, I think, per every month. We now have a claim on the province of Seculia. Alright, let's maintain the armies. Got my voices going. Uh, get our morale back up and get ready to attack. 
It should be quick. We should make it quick anyway. <clears throat> we just need to build up that loyalty. So when is um, Sy Syracusean warships is just about to be done. 17th of July, so 10 days. Interested to see our fleet composition. Is that it? There they are. Oh shit, we've got a Mega Polyreme in it. Wow, nice. That is pretty good. Only four heavy ships though. You need five, I think, if you want to capture ports. So if we could build one, that'd be great. But I don't think we can. So when the hell do we get the tech to build one? Not too sure. Or is it just you need wood, is it? Is that it? Uh, allows Hexair and tet Tetair units. And what have we got? Yeah, I, can't I actually just can't remember right now. Sorry, you guys probably know. I'm so sorry. I hate it when I don't know something in this now because I'm always like, I know that I've known before. So, like, why can't I remember, you know? But yeah, I'm not too sure what you got to do. I would have thought it was a tradition. So that's ship damage, ship damage, repair at sea. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to know because we can, I mean, it's very powerful to be able to just capture ports to do port assaults and things like that. So... I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I can't remember how to do it. I'll have to look it up. Now, maybe there's an invention for it. Which would seem weird if that was the way it was done. Also, we have 500 gold now. We should definitely get some inventions. National tax. That's good. Claim fabrications. Not bad. Alright. So our fleet is now pretty massive. We've 88 ships. Moria has 85. Egypt's lagging behind with 63. All right, our armies are pretty much up and ready to go. Let's advance on Kalakte. So we'll just have to, it's gonna take a little bit of time. It's just gonna be sieging some forts, nothing too crazy. 100% support in the Senate, actually not, 72%. Uh, the populace ain't too happy about it, but not too not too bad. We can force it through, though. Or not, we don't have to force it through. We have enough support. I think it's over 50. Could be over 60, but over 72 were plenty. Um, all right, we're ready to go. Let's do it. Seculia and Tindaria. Let's go. Got to put on the war music, of course. All right. I gave him a little head start there, but that's fine. Only level 6 general here. No problem, though. No problem. If I had a third army, this would go smoother. But um, our allies should be able to take care of the rest after these initial skirmishes. Great. Oh, the Roman fleet. What are they up to now? 19 ships. Okay. Fleet battles are always pretty interesting because, you know, it can, they can escalate really quickly where you might have more ships, but if they capture a lot initially, then they kind of flip the tables on you. So we have some scorned families. Not too bad, though. I think I said that before. I'm sure it's fine. What's our active diplomacy like? We're close to getting those integrations started. And what about end of an era. So yeah, we need to just do Seculian Domination, and then this one will be Wine and Grain. So any territory producing <coughs> Wine and Grain in Sicily will be given the modifier. What do we have to do, though? Not sure what we have to do. Uh, I'm tempted just to hop back on this army real quick. All right, we've won over in the east, and we've won here, so that's basically GG. We got hit by pirates again. Just don't know. Keep them on hunt fleets and hope for the best. Can't be microing that all the time. Be crazy. I'd be literally playing at like one day tick rate if I was doing that. How's the food situation for these armies? Kind of low for this one.
Alright, cool. We can just kind of leave that in the background, to be honest. I don't know if I even need the war music. The war is kind of over, to be honest. So, we're just gonna go regular music, but if something happens and we get retaliated against it, maybe. But for now, we'll keep it, keep it chill, because we're not under any immediate threat. So, the current population here, we need to be a little bit more punic than neurasic. Neuragic. Neuragic? Yeah, so we need way more Levantine and Canon. Well, the religion's fine, but this one's real slow. That'll help us do our colonizations. How's Rome doing? So I don't really want to waste time fabricating claims on them. I'm guessing our missions are going to help us do that. Omen power. Let's go with that. Let's do a stability hit. Actually, no, no, no. We're almost at 50 uh, political influence. Then we can get a new city built over in the west. Uh, shoring up defenses. The denizens of the territory of Ziz. So we had this before, actually. Ziz is here. And they want to build a fort. They already have a fort. So I'm going to say no, and they can just give us the manpower. Lowers the loyalty of the governor here, but that's okay. I wonder how the um, conversions are doing now. So let's check the religious. Still kind of the same. Okay. Arrival at court. Lately, our Safet Himilco, Barca, has come into conflict with Verminia Hanid at every turn and decision. Their opinions persistently clashing. If one of them says south, the other will promptly say north. If one wants to trade with a neighbor, the other will argue for war. This constant bickering is ruining whatever authority Himilco used to have, and the atmosphere in Carthage is at a breaking point. Fine, have it your way then, Vermina. Or enough of this nonsense, you're not the Suffet of Carthage. Yes, indeed. I don't even want to know. What's that give me? <laughs> I guess I do want to know. No, we don't want to lose popularity. Fuck that. You're not the Suffet. You're leading an army. Sit the fuck down. There he is, leading the, leading the fort siege right now. There's actually barely anybody in it. It's the same in both, is it? 490, and then this one is uh, 553. Yeah, we'll just we'll just keep sieging it. It's tempting to just assault because there's such low numbers. We now have a claim on the province of Calabria. Oh yeah, <laughs> cool. So going to war here would bring in Hipponion. So we'd get two cities if we managed to win it, which I'm sure we would. <coughs> I'll see why not. Uh, Locri was going to come to their aid. I wish they would. Getting the boot of Italy like that would be nice. Well, let's just uh, fabricate our way. No, nah, should we do that? Yeah, let's fabricate now. Calabria again for Locri, and we'll see how that goes. Might be able to just cross straight over after this war. Wrap it up real quick. Uh, we need another 100 gold to establish a city out here, and then we can start the colonization process. That's what I want to do. <clears throat> but to do that, we probably need to, like, turn off the fleet maintenance or something, at least. Because the fleet maintenance is kind of heavy right now. 12 gold, and the army is 10. Forts are not too bad. We'll turn off the forts for now. We don't need them on. Helps just a little. Nice. So our allies have captured these two territories. So Tindaria is done. We can actually just take them out now. Alright, see you later. Uh, we'll lower our own aggressive expansion and just keep going. Uh, it's the same with this one, actually. We've just taken them out as well. So who is this? This is Seculia. And then it's just this last city to go. So we're just cleaning up. Cleaning up Sicily. No problems. Army's just been defeated. Now it's just a siege left to go. Uh, and in that regard, we do not need to be paying the armies, so we'll just lower the costs of all that stuff right now. And continue the siege. Sicily burns. But it's alright. <laughs> wonder can these guys be integrated? They're a republic, so I would have thought so. Yeah. Just need a little bit more opinion with them as well. Alright, let's improve opinion with Gymnasia. Although, I think they're kind of nice to have out there, to be honest. They kind of came over on boats before. What's their, um... They've got seven cohorts. We'll leave them for now. Although, what is their culture, I guess, would be the real question. The more we can get of our own culture, 
They are Punic and Levantine. Yeah, let's obviously get them then. Um, right, so improve opinion out here. Good. It's not like they have a big navy, right? No. All right, we won our siege, so that's GG, I believe. For Sicily. Oh, they don't want to say yes to it, although they don't have anything left. It's weird. I guess when we get this final town, we win. Trade route disappeared. We're no longer importing wine from Sicania. It's to be expected. All right, cool. That's it. 100%. Let's go. Okay, and lower our aggressive expansion each time. So there we go. So that is Sicily done and dusted. We do not need the fort here anymore, I don't think. We'll get rid of that one. With two forts here, it might be overkill. We'll just have the one at Messena, I think, is probably ideal. Uh... Yeah. Oh, just, we'll leave it for now. Get rid of the Gallus one. We have two out here. I, I'm happy with that. I don't mind it slowing them down a bit if we do get invaded. But if things look good, then we'll reduce the amount we have. All right, cool. War is over. Although we're probably just going to go straight to war with these guys. Take Calabria. What's their situation? Four and four. So there's only eight 8,000 cohorts. You know what? I'm just going to go to war and let my allies do the work. I don't even think I have to do anything. As long as we pay for our forts, I don't think so. Alright, take Calabria. Yeah, we'll keep the forts being paid. We just stopped paying our fleets temporarily there, so it might be a bit of an issue. Alright, cool. All looking good. So, the next election term is coming up. It looks like the religious faction are leading the charge, and it's because of this guy. His popularity being at 23% is giving him an 11% increase to everyone else. His prominence is giving him a nice increase. His prestige from his family. Who is he? What's his family? Barca. His prominence is 100. Yeah, wow. So he's just a known guy. So it looks like he's going to get it. It's hard to tell because we don't know who else is coming as a close second to him. But I'm assuming it's probably this guy. Alright, cool. So that will mean that we'll get an omen power buff once they get in power. And uh, we've got a really stable senate. I mean, we're basically back to the basics. Just one extra support for the religious faction right now. So that's good. Uh, we've been keeping the populists at bay, which is nice. We just have the one in here. And he's fine. So that's good. Alright, let's see do our allies mobilize against uh, Regium. Yep, they're on their way. <laughs> That's kind of nice. We don't even have to do anything. Hopefully not. If I can get away with not paying my army, that'd be nice. All right, next month, we'll have the political influence to establish a city out by uh, this place, Rutubius. Rutubius? That's a nice surround, you know, town that we can easily start spreading out from, I think. What about here? Did we colonize that yet? No. All these towns have less than 10 pops still. The city looks really weird out here. I guess it's tribal in its style. Looks strange. Alright, our guys have crossed over with 20,000. I guess that's the benefit to not integrating, like, everybody, right? We'll keep some of them around. I'm probably going to do about three integrations. Um, we'll keep some of them around, because they do field stacks, you know? Having a lot is beneficial to helping you out. Gotta hand it to them. They do all right. Thirty, I mean, 38,000 troops, like, that's pretty good <laughs> from all of our little tribes. And uh, republics and so on. So, not too shabby. We're just sitting on top of the burning cities right now. Oh, by the way, yeah, so we just got Seculean domination. So that's going to increase our loyalty here. So, what's the loyalty? It's actually going up already, which is nice, but this will help it go up even faster. Uh, so the Seculeans are, an ancient, are the ancient inhabitants of Sicily, who lived there long before the Greeks decided to settle the coastline. Though they have been pushed back to the central parts of the island, they have often shown a streak of independence and stubbornness that we would need to quash if we were to proceed. Boop. Quashed. Uh, then we have wine and grain and end of an era. So this one only needed five more ter five or more territories in Sicily that produce wine or grain. I'll just hold them. And then any territories that are would then get that negative to slave... Uh, the need for slaves on their uh, product. So that's good. On the trade good. 
And then we have End of an Era. At the completion of this mission task... I didn't read that one, sorry. So let's... Ah, oh shit, I can't read it now. Damn. Um, Many wars have raged across Sicily, often bringing poverty and death in its wake. With the whole region under our rule, we'll have no no longer fear, have to fear Greek attacks. And the only thing that remains is to decide how we'll govern the area. Uh, as the completion of this miss mission task, Sicily will either be put under Punic domination or released as a subject of Carthage. Oh shit. They might become a subject? Oh shit, I don't want that. Oh, we have to decide maybe, I guess. Victory in Sicily. At long last, our struggle for the island of Sicily is over, and with it, our Mediterranean position is unquestionably secured. We no longer need to worry over the threat of Greek interference in our vital trade routes or the ambitions of their tyrants and kings and the rich Greek cities of the Italian peninsula lie open before us. However, Sicily is a populous island with a long and proud Greek tradition in addition to that of local Latin tribes. These spirited people have had much invested in the Punic defeat and will will in a Punic defeat and will doubtlessly not be immediately content with our rule. It has been suggested that a client state can be established in order to placate the desire for self-governance. Others advocate that this island is no different from any other and must bend to our will. Local rulership will calm the masses, so we'll release a feudatory named Ipicratia, who will gain control of all of our territories in the areas of Sicania, Syracuse, and Seculia, and uh, will gain popularity for doing so, or any subject in the areas of these will be integrated by Carthage. Oh fuck. I'm just going to immediately integrate... Those two, I think? Province of Sicania against Punic overlordship, overlordship, over so local unrest won for 10 years. Yep, sorry, you, they will have to simply accept our overlordship. And there you go, those two are done. Salinas and uh, Heraclea Manoa. Good night. Complete the mission. End Sicilian warfare. Done. There we go. Entering Magna Gratia. Ooh, that's exactly what I'm doing. When we have expanded our influence in Magna Gratia. When we... Yeah, I think that's where I'm going to go next then. But look at this. There we go. How nice is that? Clean AF, right? Clean, nice borders. Looks good. I didn't expect that. It's real nice to get those integrations quickly. Now, I kind of wish we got to choose when to do that a bit more. I mean, I guess I could have held off. Uh, I suppose I could have. Because it's nice having those extra armies with us. Now our, we're going to be a little bit reduced in numbers. Because there was a few armies out there. But oh well, they're ours now, so we're going to have to calm this place down. Unrest is going to be building a little bit. It's 2.71, 2.1, 2.3. Yes, it's kind of rough. So we're just going to have to mass convert as best as we can. And then start building what we can to kind of keep the people happy in these cities. But there's a lot of pops here, so how many did we get in this town? There's 29 there and 20 there. So we just jumped up in pops quite a bit. And we can actually remove the forts here. Don't think we need them. Oh, we actually get money back from doing that? Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, pretty tempted to do that with both of these. Alright, cool. Well, that means now we can found the new city out here. For 200 gold and 50 influence. Excellent. Alright, we're doing good, I think. So, nine years in, we have all of Sicily under our belt, and we're already invading Magna Gratia. So, I know it's a lot of reading, I hope you guys don't mind. I like it. I enjoy it. So let's go entering Magna Gratia. Magna Gratia is at the crossroads between the Italic North and the Greek East, and those in charge of it will be able to trade with both sides in their many conflicts. The mission will be considered complete when we have expanded our influence in Magna Gratia. All right, so taking Calabria. That's what we're planning on doing. So that's when that's owned by us, we can go down that tree. Tarantine Cavalry. One of the following must be true. The owner of Tarentum has an opinion of 150 or greater of Carthage. Tyrus is owned by Carthage or one of their subjects. The ports of Magna Grecia. One of the following must be true. Carthage holds three or more parts, ports in the areas of Calabria, Lucania, and Tarentum. Wow, okay, this is big conquests here. I'll probably go through a lot of that in between episodes, so I'm not just sitting here reading for a lot. Um, but for now... It seems like it might be wise to start really fabricating claims out here. I thought maybe some of the missions would do that for us, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So we'll have to think about that. Um, so yeah. So let's just see really quickly, what was it? Um, now we could just raise the opinion of those client states and maybe try to do it somehow peacefully. I mean, that would be nice to try and do. As something different, you know? The owner of Regian, opinion 150 or higher. 
Oh, well, we're about to invade Regium, aren't we? <laughs> it's Croton and Taris that we might be able to get on our side. So let's try that. Oh, we lack the... Uh, okay. Let's try at least Taris. Although I don't know if I'm thinking of this correctly then, sorry. So all of the following need to be true. I don't know what happens if we've killed them. I'm guessing it changes if we own it, right? But Croton and Taurus, if we had them at 150, we wouldn't need to occupy them for that to finish. And if that finished, our rewards would be we'd gain popularity. It's actually not that great. But I wonder is it the kind of thing that we just had in Sicily where we just eventually get them, you know? But let's play their ball game and see what happens. I don't think it would make me get the opinion and then just go to war. I don't think it would do that. So we'll see how it shakes out. All right, let's keep it moving. So we're just letting our allies do the work right now. Uh, I'm also claiming on Lockery. You know what? Now we can pay the armies, move them over to um, hang on, an unfortunate conflagration. Mago Eshbalid has been a constant thorn in the side of our dear Suffet for some time now. It was therefore a source of some interest when his entire estate was engulfed in a raging inferno just last night. This morning, Mago appeared before the Senate on his knees, beseeching us to offer assistance in rebuilding his blackened wreck of an estate. It's truly awful. Let's pledge what we can. We'll gain, he'll gain some loyalty. Stop seeing us as a rival. He should simply have taken better precaution. He'll lose some loyalty. He's the governor of uh, Mauritania. Seize the estate, and we'll take it for ourselves. Uh, we'll lose some loyalty, uh, popularity doing that. He'll lose loyalty, but we'll get state-owned farmlands until the end of the game, giving a local unrest and local tax just to one city, Medicera. Uh, I don't think it's out here. It would have been... Yeah, it would have been west, right? Let me see where the city is. Uh... No, I guess not. So I guess this is states out here. It's weird though. He's not a governor out here. It seems weird that it's done that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we need to do that then. Because there's no city there or anything. So it seems kind of pointless. I would, well, I would help if I had the money, but I don't. So we'll just say you should have taken better precaution. Sorry, mate. Yeah, a bit weird. So I guess he just has holdings there for some reason. Or something. I don't know. He doesn't anymore anyway. Uh, Eugorus the Slave. For the last few days, the dark corners of the Senate House have been abuzz with the whispers of huddled relics. I'm just going to change that song. It's a bit loud. Of huddled relics resembling senators. An ambitious freed man of the Libertini has managed to make his way from the alleys of Ceresi to the Assembly in Carthage, winning local elections with wide popular support. Whether his success can be attributed to merit or more nefarious means has been a hot topic among his detractors, but in, many ca in any case, Eugorus and his supporters are demanding that he be granted an office befitting of his talents. Naturally, the more traditional members of the house are loath to tolerate his presence at all, and, the feel, uh, and feel the promotion of former slaves demeans their nobility such as it is. He'll go further yet. We should toler not tolerate slaves on the Senate floor. The situation is easily solved. So because our guy is a questionable character, apparently, we'll gain six tyranny, tyranny and this guy will disappear. Uh, and he'll pay 100 to do that. We'll gain 10 corruption. That's a lot of corruption. Interfering in politics, never. We're not gonna, we'll lose popularity. We'll gain 15 political influence. He has a chance to gain office. I'll do that then. Because, yeah, I don't want to... Hmm. The slaves would be pretty happy if we do put him in charge of something. But the populace gain way too much influence, so fuck that. We shouldn't tolerate slaves on the Senate floor. Citizen happiness goes up. This guy... Yeah, I'm going to say that. I know it's a bit bigotry, but I believe they would say that. We should not tolerate slaves on the Senate floor. And as a result, this guy's going to lose loyalty. Uh... For the next 10 years, we'll have citizens be quite happy, but slaves be negative 5% happiness, which isn't that bad. And then civic faction influence, which is the real deal clincher for me. Let's go with that then. And yes, deal clincher is definitely a term. 
All right, so I'm thinking of getting on the boats here and uh, going straight over to Lockery and waging war now that we have a claim right there now. Speaking of, they haven't advanced in here yet. So we're at war with Regian, but Hipponian is in the war as well. So I need them to advance into Hipponian, but they're not doing it. Oh, they are now. Good. Wreck em, boys. So let's go to Birot, hop on the boats, make our way to uh, Lockery. Oh, we don't even need to hop on the boats anymore. We've actually gotten the uh, territory now. What am I saying? So let's just walk. One of them will hop on the boats, because why not? It'd be good to just drop ourselves off uh, at the hills up here. Okay. It's looking good. We've got a blockaded port. Well, I guess we do. <laughs> I guess we do. <laughs> Uh, and right, the other army can stay there. So you hop on the boat. It's hard to tell, man. There's supposed to be two boats here. I can't see which one's which. There we go. Alright, we won that battle, but they're not sieging it because they're moving back to kill that army. Okay, cool. So let's wage this war now. So this is going to be joined. This is a big one. I didn't realize how big it was, actually. Croton and Heracli are actually going to join this war. And I was going to improve the opinion of Croton. But I have to go for Taurus instead. So Croton, Elia, Heracli, and Metapontum, and Lucania. That's a lot. But... Yeah, if we play this right, we actually get quite a bit out of this. So, let's do it. Gotta be aggressive. Gotta be aggressive. It's dangerous, but gotta be aggressive. We got the navy to get us there and to protect us on the way back, I think. So, should be fine. So let's start moving on to that port. Our other navy is moving up towards uh, Temes. So we could uh, jump off there and we should be okay. And then we can go up to Elea as well. So not too bad. We've only got two armies really on the go. You know, we could maybe even have a third at this point, but I think we're doing fine without. First Navy doesn't have anybody on it. Igarus Agarit, that slave that came out of nowhere. We could put him on the on the ships. Let's do it. He can lead the fleet. I believe that he'll be okay. Yeah, he's not losing any loyalty anymore. We'll give him a holding. He's making a real name for himself. Give him a holding in Syracuse? That seems a bit crazy. Heracli and Minoa. A fine city. The city down here, he's got a lovely holding there now for himself. His loyalty's been secured. He's leading a fleet. What more do you want, right? What's his name? Uh, Igarids. And this is going to be the first. First, Italia. All right, cool. He's actually leading with the heavy ships as well. Pretty big deal. Tarantine Cavalry. So, yeah, let's talk to Tarenta or Tar Taras. What else could we be doing? Calabria we're fighting for right now. Tarentum has an opinion of 150 or greater. Now, Tarentum, where the hell are they? Tarentum. The owner of Tarentum. Sorry, that's what I was thinking. So the owner of Tarentum is Taurus. So we can... Yeah, if we... Okay, it's good that we were improving opinion with them then. Excellent. Okay, cool. So that's working out, I think. Uh-oh. About to lose this fight. We need to get on those boats. Man, we caught that quick. Yeah, oh, shit, we didn't. Uh, yeah, we did. Okay, good. That's alright. We'll just swim around this way. 30,000 coming south now. Actually, you know what? We need the war music. It's too calm. Alright, so there's 30,000 coming south and it's made up of armies from Croton, Elea, Metapontum, Lockery, Heraclea, and Lucania. So they're all in force. It's their whole force, probably. Not too bad, considering we have 
18,000 here, just about to get off the boats. And join our boys here and hope for the best. 34,000. Ah, oh, my 5,000 is leaving me alone. Why are they leaving me? What are they made up of? Really shit stuff. Okay, so let's go skirmishing then, because it gives a benefit to our... Oh no, let's go light calf. Who's the stronger general? He's level 5, so he sucks. So it's this guy really is going to decide it. Alright, let's see how it goes. Not owning the siege is going to be the thing that gets us. There's a breach here though, so how long is it going to take for them to arrive? 4th of September. Unless we could take this in 4 days. <laughs> it's pretty tempting to try it. I mean, maybe. I don't think so, but I kind of just want to try it. I mean, there's a breach. There's only 500 garrison. One tick, two, three... Yeah, maybe. Let's just see what happens. No, not at all. <laughs> close, though. Uh, actually, not really that close. <laughs> maybe those extra troops might be the detriment of our battle. Although we've got more troops coming, so let's see. When are they arriving? 17th of September. Three days. Just hold out three days, then. There we go. See you later. Good night. 60,000 now on top of us. That was great that they came to help us. Thapsus. Appreciate it a lot. That was really touch and go. Hey, new rulers. Five years have passed. I'll have to check that out. I should have been paying attention to that before it happened. Might have to do a uh, sacrifice as well. So we have uh, Milkyaton Barka. So he was our co-ruler in the beginning, wasn't he? I'm pretty sure he was. He was our co-ruler in the beginning. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so he's the religious faction, so they're in power now, which is going to give us Owen power 10%. Not bad. Good on him. So, yeah, not bad. I mean, 888, 5. 5 could be better. You'd think the guy with the religious, the head of religion, would have more zeal, but whatever. And our co Safet is Balbodonna, and he's leading one of the armies right now, so he's going to have a lot of... Actually, is he? He's one of, leading one of the navies, yeah. I was going to say, he should have a lot of popularity. I wish I could just tell, like, can't you just, like, hunt ships? Like, what's your problem? Like, why won't you move? There's a ship right there, you know? So the automation thing doesn't seem the best. I want his popularity to go up, because it'll help our overall uh, influence, I think. It'll help our primary culture happiness and our senate influence. Alright, so that was job well done. Can't get them off the boats for some reason, though. I'm not too sure why. Oh, because we were doing the assault. The assault was still going on. Nice. Oh, nice. So we can just give chase now. Let's go. Our morale isn't the best, but if we just keep pushing, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> and we'll allow attachments. I want that 60k at my back. Oh, the other war is over, by the way. <laughs> Probably should have realized that. Okay, so. Hipponian Calabria and Oregian Calabria to us. See you later. It's only one aggressive expansion. We don't want any of them, so we just remove that one aggressive expansion and it should be all good, I think. And there we go. It's now just the one war. So how does that factor into the mission now? Yeah, so now it only says the owner of Croton and Taras, so it doesn't matter about the one we occupy. So that's good, at least it. I was worried it wouldn't figure, it, figure that out. Now our omen power has been increased, so what should we go with? Maybe discipline in a situation like this where battles count? I think that would be good. Like a 6% increase to discipline, I think that's something we can't ignore. So we'll check that out now. So yeah, we're at 108, so that's pretty damn good. Alright, we're at war with all this, by the way. Everything in red. So, quite a decent amount of stuff. And we can drop off our ships up to Metapontum and Heracli and try to capture those places as well. Uh, I don't want to end this war until we pretty much get everything that's in red. If we can. It's not, a, not as easily said as... Not as easily done as said, though. With so many little minor nations, they can... Kind of keep pestering you into that stuff. <coughs> I split my forces here now. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But hopefully my allies will join us up on both fronts. Now, how's that navy doing? So can we see any pirates anywhere? No. But if we could get this guy some battles, that'd be great. Because then he'd get more popular. 
And in fact, there is a navy here, so if we sit outside there, eventually they'll pop out. Alright, good stuff. Oh, they're actually out now. Gonna take a while to make our way over there, though. Seems like they went into Taurus. Cool. Alright, well, this is going pretty well, I think. I feel like I'm, I'm still a bit slow. But, you know, if we ever go to war with Rome, or when we go to war with Rome, that should be a pretty big conquest. You know, when we start fighting big nations, it's quicker. Because we don't have to take out all these, like, minor city-states and bother with all that stuff. Still no colonization there. Has our city been founded out here? I don't think so. Nope, kind of close though. Alright, good. And then there's Greece to think about. And then we have to start thinking of, you know, raising another army. And for a while, after we take some of Italy, actually, I think then we'll just kind of hunker down and focus on growing our economy to the point where it can't be ignored. And we can raise a good few more armies and assault places at the same time. I think that's the way we got to do it. All right, speed time back up, up to level four speed. And is there anything else we need to do in terms of office and laws? What do we have here? The noble elite is our current morale of armies is increased. We could have army costs down or war draft or draft act. which gives us more manpower and ship damage. Eh, they're kind of nice, but we don't need them. Assembly of soldiers would be good. Then we'd have a huge civic faction conviction. But fabricating claims would be way cheaper and quicker. This one would uh, lower monthly tyranny and religious influence. We don't want that one. That's going to increase populist. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. These ones don't want to change. We need more ruler popularity. I think we want to start putting laws through on this side. Because these ones are a lot tougher to change. There's only 30 seats behind this one. And that would be kind of nice. We get recovery speed now, but I think faction, re yeah, religious faction was a civic faction. Import value being would be a lot better. Anti-piracy CB, yes, that's kind of nice as well. Just a, okay. Anyway, we'll have to think about different laws in future. All right, let's get the navy up here and see what's going on in all these areas. We're at war with them all. Pirates over here. Where's the navy out this way? Did I move them? Apparently so. Let's get a navy to chill down here for a while. 51,000 manpower. How's the food situation in these armies? They've been sieging for a while. They seem fine. Alright, good. I see no problems. How's our relations with Taurus? They're improving. What else can we do to make them happy? We can make friends with their ruler. How long do we have in power? Quite a while, so now's a good time to make friends with people. Alright, so we won this siege here. So Lockery are pretty much done. Although Lockery were the ones we went to war with initially, so we have to then piece out the other ones separately. But at least they're done. So who else is our target now? Okay, so can we... Um, can we get access through you guys? They don't want to do it. Maybe if we give them a gift. Now it's negative 1,000. Oh no, it's still ne negative 10. Make it an impression. So we know what to do here. We just want to go either... Uh, yeah, we'll lose the influence, I think. I will lose the manpower to gain friendship. This fleet's not big enough to do anything with it yet. Okay, cool. The question is, how do we get... Alright, so we'll have to bring a navy then over here, and then we can jump off the ships and, and land up there. Risky business though to go on your own, and this army's not full strength yet. The High God will do anything in our power to help him. Oh, this is a different thing. I thought it was for the friendship. Okay, it's not. Our Augur... Is it? No, it's not. Our Augur Bostar Balhanid claims our future is bleak unless we please appease Balhamun. 
as he had a terrible visions about things to come. He has set aside a cutter of male animals for sacrifice, as is custom, and is asking us for the funds for a massive ceremony. Though we have nothing more than his word to go by, it is unquestionably a good idea to try and appease the gods one way or another. We lose 300 gold to do that? Can't afford it. We could do this one. A small ceremony to appease the gods would be fitting. Yep. Losing money now. We are paying a lot for our navy. Benefits of power. Uh, sure. So here's the problem. That's the 30,000 men on that. We don't have the manpower to deal with that while we're in this siege still. That siege might take a while because it's a level 2 fort. Everyone likes gold. We don't have any more gold. I'll just have to give him a small amount. I don't want to go into a deficit. Alright, let's um just temporarily we're gonna have to tuck the fleet in and stop paying them. Damn, we didn't get the friendship? Fuck's sake. That's the second time that's happened. Alright. Stopping paying the fleet gets us our money back up, so that's good. It is an expensive fleet, there's a lot of them. In fairness. So we could cut our losses and just peace out with Lockery, but obviously it'd be nice to get a little bit more. I don't know if we will be able to get these guys. Seems seems pretty rough to try and do that. But we could do it. We could try. I mean, we'll have to eventually, so... Alright, now with this being a city, we should start getting incoming migration here at some point. Although currently there's this dude wanting to leave the city. It is a port settlement as well, so when we get to, we'll build an aqueduct, increase that space. Well, there's a lot. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Maybe uh, increase the civilization value might be decent. Yeah, let's do that. 25 political influence. And encourage civilization. And then that should kind of help, I think, as well. Oh, fuck. We're in a big fight. Okay, we have the right tactic, at least. But uh, we're in trouble because our guy's not with us. We do have the nice discipline benefit as well. It's so helpful. I think when this guy joins, if he gets there in time, which he should, 17th of November, just hold out four more days. There we go. That was a close one, though. Almost missed it. Xenophobia. Heated debates in the Senate are not uncommon, especially where so many prominent members of society are involved. Lately, a wave of xenophobia swept across Carthage, resulting in foreign values being regarded with great distrust. All in attendance at today's debate agreed, however, that Balbodona crossed the line when today, he, when he accused Safat Milkiaton of indulging in barbaric Bithynian practices. Turn the other cheek and we'll gain being wise, which gives us extra finesse, monthly statesmanship, and extra citizen output as a ruler, which is pretty nice. Or we can say, well, Baal is practically Ionian. <laughs> we gain Rash, and Rash will be not good. I don't know why you would choose that then. But we'll gain popularity, I suppose. So the guy's gonna... The guy's gonna lose loyalty. Just from turning the other cheek, you'd think he'd lose loyalty if we called him Ionian. This doesn't seem to add up, in my opinion. But okay. But that's nice, because we are the ruler right now, so that gaining wise definitely helps. Alright, we won that battle. Nice. I guess it would have made sense if we went to war with one of the other ones, so we could have pieced out this area first. God, this fort's gonna take forever. The pirates are back. Start paying the fleets again, see if we can do something about that. I don't think we can. They're gonna waltz right past us <laughs> while we're not paying them. It's pretty tempting to come out with this fleet and just see what would happen. Nah. Because we have a decent amount of manpower or uh, morale? Fuck it. See what happens. Let's give him chase. Give chase to them. See if we can catch him. They're going to slow down with the attrition, actually, so we might get them. Oh, we just missed. It's interesting that some of our ships are faster than the others. It might be due to size. Siege of Croton is one. Awesome. So we get to piece them out separately, at least. 
Yeah, let's have a look at the families. I think it'd be nice to take on some extra characters. Maybe adopt some as well. Three characters, one, one. To be honest, none of them look that good in terms of the leaders, so forget it. <laughs> Alright, so we got Croton under our belt. Now, unless we can get military access here, but these guys don't want to give it to us. I can give them military access, but they don't want to give me military access. Really need it. Could go to war with them. Who's Masapia? Where are they? Oh, Masapia are in the southern... Yeah, it's a bit risky. Um, I don't know. Let's just improve opinion, and then we'll send a gift, and we'll ask for access. I think that's the best course of action. Then we can just walk through rather than risk trying to get on the boats and go through. I think it's too risky doing that. Saw that fleet just heading up north. Trying to catch them, but they're probably too far gone now. Alright, let's see if we catch them. Alright, how much time do we got left? Oh shit, not much. We're well, way over an hour. Or actually, we're just coming up on an hour, I think. Alright, looks like the Lucanians are going to be defeated there. We have to kind of wait to get through, though. Are we gaining food? We are currently gaining seven food, I think. Well, we gained the last seven food last month, anyway. Oh shit, that looks like a big fight. We're losing that one. All right, no idea where the pirates are now. They seem to have gotten away. We'll just get—they have to return to where they came from. So we'll just head back down to this crossing. Uh, okay, so let's see. Access, still no. Negative opinion. All right, well, let's send a gift. Gives us a positive opinion. Base negative 10, positive 3. Not much more I can do other than that, I don't think. Veterans do. After, war, uh, after wars, toil, and hardship, it is with hopeful eyes that the veterans of our armies look towards retirement. A life of rural farming with promised farmland often parceled out to the most deserving. Recent circumstances have led to great droves of, of our retiring soldiers clamoring for this quiet life, seeking counsel from their generals and leaders. Abdaman Hanid has been appointed on behalf of our generals to negotiate a complex arrangement whereby we might usage, uh, we might assuage our tired veterans and yield them some reward. We should be very wary that what might, might, what might occur, occur if we refuse. Commanders like bribes, don't they? So we five loyalty for the guy. We lose a lot of money, though. We don't have any money. So we'll have to lose the stability instead. We don't need their support. Like I said, it might be a risk involved with this. Let's do a stability hit. We're getting kind of low. Stability is a little harder, I think, with Republics, because every time, every five years, you take a five hit, no matter what, pretty much. Unless we were able to enable elect, uh, enable um, extended terms, which would be cool get another five years out of the people that rule. That's something I'm definitely going to be working towards. And then we'd be able to pay attention to our leaders a bit more. And something I want to do a bit better is also pay attention to our generals a bit better. Like, I'm aware of this guy. This was our previous leader, Maharbal Bodona. He's not great, though. He's only level five. We just gave him the job because he was pissed off. This guy's pretty good, though. Ver uh, Vermina Hanid. He's been doing quite well. He's actually quite popular, I think, because of his stuff. We could force his conversion. we would lose a lot of loyalty, though. We'll be up to 39. Is he gaining loyalty? Not really. Yeah, it might be too risky to do that. Let's just leave him being Massilian. I guess there's no, there's absolutely no down, that downside to that. Oh, we have two more. Um, we can start our integrations here. Now, there's, there's actually a bit of division within the Senate for this. I mean, I guess I can kind of understand why. It's good, good support for abandoning them, though. Hmm. We actually have a lot of support. We don't have that much support of the Mercantiles, though. So maybe that's why... I guess there's a lot of them. Yeah, that could be part of it. I think that's how it works. So let's just see. Let me double check on that. So if we were to get these guys. Mercantiles, 11 out of... Yeah, it's 11 out of 29, so that's why. Okay. So to get the rest of them from the mercantiles, what would we need to do? We'd need to... 
have a more popular ruler, which we're really close to actually having. A friend of this faction leader. Friend in faction with at least 80 prominence. Country is importing from the target. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, I guess we just have to make friends with this guy. How much time do we have to do that? Yeah, we've got, he's going to be in power for quite a while. Oh, it looks like... Oh yeah, that's a different guy. They all kind I mean, no offense, they do kind of look the same. <laughs> um, Alright, so in that case, let's make friends. If we can finally make friends with someone, that'd be good. I just fought, saw that navy. There they are, 34. Come on now. There we go. You got him. This is obviously bugged. I'm not showing properly. So which way are they going now? I'm trying to capture their ships. Although we almost, we kind of have too many at this point. Let's just stay here. They're coming this way. Alright, we gained 13 ships. Holy shit. We're up to 87 now. That's actually not even in total. In total, 104. Massive navy. I mean, it's a bit bloated. So yeah, we might actually start decommissioning some of these ships. Got a bit too many. But it's kind of cool though, you know, we are cleaning up the pirates, which is cool. Exotic gifts. Yep, so our leader is going to pay 100 to out of his own pocket for that. That's fine. Might be good to grant him a holding, actually, thinking about it. Give him a holding in Croton, the newly conquered city, which is pretty cool. So giving him a holding is obviously going to give him some money, and then if we have to do things like this, like bribes and such, uh, he has the money to do it. I hope we make friends. Then we can begin the integrations. Everyone likes gold. 250 of his personal wealth. That's way more than he has. We'll do it anyway. Our ruler is now bankrupt. 100, negative 160. We give him another holding, actually. He'll make even more money that way. But, uh, I mean, that makes him quite powerful. So when he's not the leader anymore, he's then suddenly a very rich man. We'll see how that all shakes out. Uh, that's a big army coming in again. Let's uh, jump up on that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Come back. Dare ya. So we'll just wait till they... There we go. They've locked in, so we can jump on in now. Hope for the best. Friendship! Hey, nice. Alright, the battle is commencing. This is going to be the final battle of today. We'll check it out in just a sec. Let's start the integration of a cola, And like I said, we've got the full support now. Up to 64 seats, so that's pretty good. And with a little nudge from Gymnasia, Gymnasia we'll get them as well. Alright, no problem, we have the right tactic again, which is good. Yeah, I think we'll stick with the war until we get them done. There's no hurry, I don't think. You know, I am focusing on other things. It'd be just good to, like, stop going to war for a little bit just to use our money to actually build infrastructure because we haven't built anything, ever. <laughs> so it's kind of bad in that regard. But we haven't, like, done too bad for numbers and stuff. Like, our um, manpower has been quite decent the entire time. Oh, shit, these two are at war. Tarentum's at war with uh, Brutia. Wait, Tarentum? Oh, sorry, I always think Taurus is called Taurus, but they're actually called Tarentum, I see. <clears throat> hey, we just did this, the ports of Magna Gratia. So Taurus' opinion of us is only 35, so what was the conditions of this one? Carthage holds three or more por ports in the areas of Calabria, Lucania, and Tarentum. Also, I guess doing that was just a, like a separate, another way of doing it. So you could do it aggressively or pass it peacefully. Okay, so Croton gets um, Punic ports until 18th of February 83. So for 20 years, we're going to get an increase the commerce value attraction and assimilation in these three ports. In uh, Croton, Region, and Hipponian. And then Tarantine Cavalry, if we want to get that, we need that opinion to go really high for Taurus. 
Um, we'll have a look at what to, I'll have a look at what to do in between episodes and then read it back to you in the beginning of the next one. Uh, but yeah, these guys are looking pretty happy. Let's give them military access, see if they want it. Seeing as they're at war with Brutia. So they can come through my territory should they need to. Uh, and these guys still don't want to give me access, even though we gave them a gift. And we're improving opinion, it's still not good enough. The bastards. Alright, so that's going to be it for today. So, pretty cool. We took a little... So we solidified Sicily, which is obviously nice. And then we started making our way into Italy just a little bit. We're currently at war down here. It looks like as long as Rome stay out of our affairs, we should be able to conquer even more. We actually own a little piece of Elalia, uh, Elia right now as our allies are kind of cleaning up shop up there. Interestingly, we're actually integrating Hadramentum, so they're going to be gone. And we're integrating Akola, so these two armies, they're going to be gone. Uh, and beyond that, I don't think I'll integrate any more for quite a while. We'll let, let the rest of these armies kind of come help us. The thing is, though, we did remove... Yeah, no, some of them like Utica and I imagine Kerakoan will help us out. And so should Gymnasia. They'll get on boats and actually help, I think. Uh, although some of them are kind of weirdly spaced out. I don't know what they're doing. Hopefully they'll come help. Should they? Should, uh, should we need them? Um, and the other thing is then we gained a huge fleet. I know, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing you guys are probably saying like, why are you just sitting there with a massive fleet? You'll never need that much. I don't know. It's kind of cool <laughs> having it. It's, uh, it's probably not cost effective though at this point because yeah, it'd probably be cheaper in the long run just to build that up should we, when we need it. I need to look up in between episodes how to make heavy ships because I can't remember <laughs> as well. Um... All right, so that's pretty much going to be it. So we're just going to keep working our way up Italy and going down this chain, uh, the entering Magna Gratia chain, taking Calabria. So that's going to be kind of the goal. It's owned by Carthage or is a subject. So the only other way of doing this is going to be to eventually declare war on these guys and get them to be a subject, unless we can make them like us enough somehow to actually do that. Uh, which they might. They don't seem to have any allies. They just have defensive... Uh, they're in a defensive league. So they don't have any really big protectorates out there. So they might, they might like us eventually if we just keep keep them happy. Like, what don't they like? Our aggressive expansion is getting a little high for them, I guess. And then a different culture group, so yeah. That's, I mean, that's, this is nothing, you know? We're going to be up in the 40s probably the whole game once we start really taking on Italy. Um, but yeah, things are looking pretty good right now. Money's stable, manpower's decent. I think we'll, after this war, we'll probably calm down before a massive war with Rome. And see if we can focus on some buildings. Uh, maybe see if we get the civic dudes in power again. So it looks like we've actually got a problem on our hands. Uh, this guy's going to get into power, so we'll, and so is the other populace. Shit. That's not good. So we'll have to see if we can endorse the others and make these other characters a little bit stronger and better. I would love it if this guy got in power. Um, but he's going to need a bit more prominence. He's going to need some more popularity. So maybe I'll give him a holding, give him a bit more wealth. I'll raise his prominence over time, I think, and stuff. Uh, what's his job? He's a physician, is he? Yeah, he's the physician. Hmm. I'll see. Okay. All right. That's going to be it. Sorry the episode went on a bit long. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.